Okay, I'm back with a new video and this video is about a curve that is either lifted or a curve that is reversed. In both cases, the curve is gone. It's reversed, lifted, removed, gone, disappeared, not an issue anymore. Um, the funny thing is, it's not that hard to send a curve back to the sender or just stop it or block it or eliminate it. It's totally doable, but what makes it hard is that the target, especially when a curse went on for a long time, and especially when it's gone through generations, um, there is disbelief and doubt. Is the curse really gone or is it still there? Is it that easy to lift the curse? Is it that easy, simple to remove a curse, reverse it? Is that even possible? I suffered. I was sick. I was frustrated. I was desperate. I was depressed. I was suicidal. And now I'm free. I don't believe it. There's disbelief. I doubt that it's gone. I suspect that it's still there. It can't be that easy. Now, this disbelief and doubt invite the curse that was removed or sent back right back into the life of the target. That's just like a magnet that draws in the energy that it lived with for a very long time. And I think most of us know that it takes a while for a curse to fully hit. Sometimes it takes one, two, three months. Sometimes it takes three, four, six or 12 years, uh, depending on somebody's spiritual immune system and depending on how skilled the cursor was. So disbelief and doubt keep the curse going, even through the process of healing and removal, or they, the target invites the curse back into his or her life, even though the curse was lifted and reversed. That's very difficult to deal with. I find it very difficult to see somebody invite suffering and illness and bad luck back into his or her life, even though it was gone. It was definitely 100% gone. And they invited it right back in simply because they cannot believe that they have their freedom back. Uh, free will, health, you know, prosperity, abundance, good luck. Um, the second reason is um, fear. People know that the curse is removed, but they are still behaving like prey or victim, and that triggers the curse to come back and get activated all over again. Or somebody behaves like a scared little bunny or a freaky little mouse or something prey-ish, and they curse themselves. So maybe the original curse was removed or lifted or reversed by keeping their behavior of being prey victim going, they invite or attract by the law of attraction or something else magical or energetically inappropriate or uncomfortable or some kind of disharmony. They um, keep attracting bad luck and illness and death and bad luck and more bad luck and uh, nothing but bad luck. Um, so we have disbelief and doubt, we have, have fear and then we have something even more tricky which is second gain. Um, second gain is something that pops up when the target feels that there is something to gain from being cursed. Uh, he or she might get sick and because he or she is suffering, neighbors and family and children will come over all the time and do groceries and take care of the garden and 
um, take care of the victim that isn't a victim anymore because he or she wants to stay cursed. They can complain about all the things that go wrong and people feel sorry for him or her or, you know. A second gain is even more tricky than disbelief and doubt and fear because somebody gains something out of being cursed. Maybe somebody gets into a car accident or rolls down a hill or gets corona or, you know, uh, gets evicted or whatever. All these bad things happening trigger empathy and compassion and care and, you know, in other people that are like, oh my God, I feel so sorry for you. And they start helping this person and giving it attention and uh, the target can keep whining and complaining and keep attracting bad luck just a little bit not too much most of the time but an ongoing flow of bad things happening because they are going to be whoo and boo and um i'm in pain and i'm suffering and please help me and can you make a cup of coffee for me and by the way my house needs uh, a thorough deep clean and the laundry you know peace Bring it outside in the garden and when it's dry, start, you know, cleaning it and folding it. And um, being sick is something that really helps some people to get what they want emotionally and mentally and spiritually in a weird way. Uh, the fourth thing is when you are vampiric. Um, when you are a vampire and you are targeted with a lot of bad luck and bad energies, it's quite easy, especially when you are a natural vampire, to transform this energy into something good. So you don't have to vampire as much as you would have in a normal situation. Thanks to the curse, you get free energy. You transform it inside, being a vampire, and you thrive on curses. That's a fourth thing. Now, the fourth thing is a little bit rare, um, but it is there. It's real. So, um, if you are a trained vampire and a natural vampire, you can detect a curse and um, pull it in deliberately, transform it, and use the energy to... Um, do healings or build a good life or get healthy or stay healthy or stay young or, you know. But from disbelief and doubt and fear and second gain, I think second gain is the hardest one to tackle. And I don't think it's fair to ask the one that is going to reverse the curse or lift the curse to tackle that issue also. Um, it takes a lot of healing. It takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of positivity. Um, and that's draining because even though a removal or reversal is 100% sure, effective and definite, the target can keep the curse going in so many ways that they have a tendency to keep nagging and whining and complaining even though there's nothing to complain about. They simply cannot accept the fact that they are free and they forgot about how to use freedom to build a prosperous life, to build a healthy life, to build a life with good luck and happiness and joy and fun and love and things like that. So if you are asking me to remove or reverse or to lift or to get rid of a curse, fine. But I'm not going to do it for free. And you have to know that you can handle 
your newfound freedom. You have to be able to let go of all that suffering and maybe at the attention of other people that came with it, compassion and sympathy and being helpless is not going to help you. Being helpless, being addicted to being helpless keeps the curse going. If you are afraid that the curse is coming back, it will come back. You know, so you have to do a lot of work yourself. Lifting or reversing a curse isn't that hard. It's, it's hard work, but it's doable. It takes a lot of time, but it's not impossible at all. It's you that's often keeping the curse going and that's painful. Um, that's painful. So if you feel curse, think about your natural immune system and if fear and doubt, fear in general, fear of life, fear of love, fear of friendship, doubt about life, doubt about yourself, not being able to forgive yourself, um, stress is making you sick, uh, self-doubt is making you stuck, blocked, paralyzed, you know, all these things keep a curse going. You can remove a curse yourself if you are a little bit trained and you know what you're doing. But then the same thing happens if you are so used to be. That's another thing. It's not just doubt and being used to being cursed. Like I said in the a little bit earlier, some curses are somebody curses a target. It takes a while to break down somebody's natural immune system. Somebody's immune system, spiritual immune system, gets weaker and weaker and weaker year by year. And finally it hits and somebody gets used to a life that's going downhill slowly. That's another thing. But still it leads back to disbelief. You are free. What? Yes, you're free. Okay, so before you ask somebody to lift or reverse a curse, think about if there is something inside of you that's going to invite the curse back in or block the process or want, doesn't want the curse to leave or, you know, things like that. A um, little bit of a rant and I hope that you found this useful. See you next time. Bye.